Alrighty, welcome everybody. It is our episode, it is our 33rd episode for the year, and I'm glad to have Doug, our, our co-host for tonight. We've got an exciting episode. It is the best phones for school. And Doug, as you know, the kiddos are returning back to school, to public school, to college, and I know that we've been having our back-to-school specials uh, over the last few weeks, looking at, you know, computers and tablets and stuff like that. But, you know, these days, unlike when you and I were in school, it almost seems that a phone is a necessity, especially, you know, when it comes to some of the dangers out there now these days with shootings and things like that. It almost makes sense to equip your, your child these days uh, with a phone, you know. Uh, Grandma probably would have hit us with a 2 by 4 if, we, if she had known we'd let our kids have phones. But, uh, you know, these days it's almost a necessity. Um, you know, the, the fact is that phones are just not communication devices. They're actually internet tools and I know that my daughter uses her phone quite a bit uh, in addition to her laptop uh, when it comes to education so I think phones are pretty much a necessity these days yeah, I agree uh, college kids and high school kids you and junior high kids now yeah you know yeah, yeah. I remember Remember a few years ago, uh, you and I used to work for a company that uh, kind of balked at the idea of uh, employees having personal cell phones. And, you know, they tried different mechanisms to discourage that, but it just didn't work. <laughs> no, no. The cat's out of the bag. Okay. The, the cat's out of the bag. So, yeah. some, you know, something like that, people are going to figure out a way to use them. Yeah, and quite honestly, you know, I know that there's always been this grand debate about, you know, how much phone time is spent by employees as well as students, but I don't think the problem is as big as it is, or at least I hope it isn't, you know? <laughs> no, I don't think so either. I mean, they're going to make the phone calls anyway, and why should you tie up a, a company phone? You know why should you why why should you tie up a company phone if you can conduct the business either by text message or you know um, you know you know you and I can remember back in the day that you would have one phone and it would be shared by I don't know four people right yeah yeah and then okay and then the people would have to you know they use the phone they'd go across the room pick it up and call it. Right. Uh, it, it, you know, his cat's out of the bag. It's too late yeah. now. I well, mean, you, know, you know, it's funny because 
you know, I work from home and I'm supplied with a voice over IP phone, but quite honestly, I don't even use that anymore. Most of my meetings are conducted over the audio features and Teams and Slack and stuff like that. You know, I honestly rarely pick up the VoIP phone. You know, the only time when I do is when the when the other services are either down or whatever. But beyond that, I don't even use the extension anymore, you know. So that's where that's that's the reason why you see the cable companies now they're giving the the phone service free. Yeah. Or the cable service free because everybody's streaming now. Yeah. And cell phones you know. are, you know, much more convenient, you know. Oh, yeah. All righty. Well, for tonight's episode, we're going to go over the best phones for school. And as you know, Doug is the Apple guru of gurus for the RGV. So it made sense <laughs> for Doug to come back and present uh, the Apple iPhone line. I have to say that this has been the year that Apple has had a variety of phones you know, usually they introduce phones, kill other phones, some disappear, but they've got a slew of phones and the phone sizes across the board. And uh, it's incredible now because it almost appears that the size of the screen and maybe storage is the differences. You know, you get the same camera across the board, the same chip across the board. It almost is just a matter of preference on screen size and storage. But to do that, and of course, it wouldn't be fair to just, you know, present the Apple Kool-Aid. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do the alternative and I'm going to show what some of the best Android phones there are out there as well. Uh, so Doug's going to cover the Apple side, I'm going to cover the Android side, and I think between both of those, uh, you'll get a pretty good idea of what kind of phone you should get, um, you know, for your child, or yourself for that matter, you know. And by the way, uh, Ashley Miller, uh, welcome to our show. I believe it's the first time we've seen you. We appreciate you coming on. And if you have any questions... Feel free to, you know, pop in the, the, the questions and we'll try to answer them. And that goes for anybody else. All righty, so we're going to switch over to our virtual theater. I've taken out the seats and the popcorn machine and there's nothing much left except screen and, and, and our two cameras. So uh, we're going to go ahead and flip to that. Give me one second. Okay. Mm -hmm. All righty, so this is our presentation, and basically it's which phones are best for school. As I mentioned, we're looking at Android and uh, Apple, um, because those are the two major platforms. There isn't any other mobile platform out there be, beyond those two. So uh, if anybody's got a rotary phone, I that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, so or, uh, Doug, flip phone. yeah, or a flip phone, right? Well, but those yeah. are coming back. Yeah. Those are coming back, foldables, you know. <laughs> All righty, Doug, uh, we've got our first screen here, which is yours, so you can go ahead and get started. Okay, Danny, um, we're going to go from left to right. Uh, we're going to first of all, we're going to talk about the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Uh, this is the big kahuna of all the phones. Um, it's got the A15 Bionic chip in it, and it's got three cameras. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, it's the um, battery life is a, is 22 hours or more, and it's got the MagSafe, so you don't have to worry about the USB-C uh, cable anymore. Um, now, I want to – and on the new – operating system for the mac that's coming next out probably october or so there's a thing called continuity continuity uh -huh. okay and let's say that you have a um um uh, a mac air or an older imac or whatever 
and the camera isn't so great well with continuity you um uh you can hook these phones up and use it as a webcam really okay yeah you, you can and so the camera is so you know obviously the the cameras on the iphones are much better than they are on the on the computers well i'll so tell that's you what feature yeah go ahead yeah that's the new feature that's going to come out and um ios 16 that'll probably drop when the new iphones drop in probably the middle of september or so and um from what i've heard and the podcasts i've listened to uh it's all wireless um it's not like camo camo you have to have a cable hooked up to it it's kind of kind of geeky in order to get uh, camo to work out but this is continuity just you just uh hit a couple switches on your phone or your mac and then you can use it as a webcam so you're plus, telling plus me plus you can do downside now, and are plus you, you telling... can do down yeah. down down deals too so you're telling me that like for example and i agree with you when it comes to the iphone cameras i've got a an iphone 6s believe it or not that i play with uh when i'm doing yeah. podcasting and testing camera feeds and i've got some other software that i use but i basically have been impressed even on the 6s that it's got a better camera or a comparable camera to this logitech 920 that's sitting here on top of my monitor right. and this is a 6s several generations 6S. yeah se several generations behind that's so, going back almost 10 years exactly so yeah but when you say wireless, are you saying that there's not going to be a need for a wire anymore? That you're going to get the camera feed through this continuity wireless? Yeah, let's say you hook up FaceTime, uh huh, okay, or FaceTime or Zoom or Team or whatever, whatever service you're using. Yeah. Okay, and then um, you just you know you click the iPhone onto that app. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, and then you can do um, you you can do the blur like the new iPhones have got a you know what they call the bokeh effect. Okay, right. and then you know and the blur and all that you can do all that. And there's an app that was a couple Apple engineers two or three years ago left Apple and they developed an app called Camo, uh -huh. and Camo actually does the same thing, but you have to hook a cable up from your computer to the phone. Okay. Wow. Well, the, the continuity, you don't need that. And so, for example, and um, okay, and, and there's some third party, mostly Logit Logitech is working on a clamp that can, or a stand that can just clamp onto your Mac Air or your computer or whatever. And you just put your phone inside that and use that as a webcam. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now talk and also to me. too, yeah, and ahead. also too, it does, you know, like you want to, you want to get to see a shot of your keyboard, right? It has, you can do that too. You can, um, uh, you can change the camera to, uh, shoot the, uh, a down, uh, above, right. okay. Down and, and, and so that's kind of cool. And all the reports, you know, there's, there's, um, the beta's out. You're like, I don't know, maybe two or three versions of the beta out already. Right. And all the reports I've heard that it's working really well. Wow. So talk Not to so me. Not so much for stage manager, but for yeah. uh, continuity, it works well. So talk to me a little bit about MagSafe, because I'm confused. I'm confused about how MagSafe differs from the Lightning Connector and from the USB-C. Are we talking a whole different connector than what we've seen in the past from a lightning yeah, connector? Yeah. It's sort of like what I've got in my on my iMac, uh -huh. my new iMac here. Okay. okay. Uh MagSafe, you know, they Apple came out with MagSafe, you know, a long time ago, you know, on the on the computers and then they got away from it right. two or three years ago. And then they brought it back. And MagSafe is say, you know, it's easy to pull the cord out and doesn't tear everything up if right. you have a USB C, I don't know if you'd notice but sometimes you know if you like knock it or knock it off a table or 
whatever the case is, it can it can pretty much damage your phone or damage the, the or, or damage the cable. Right. You know. And I've had that happen yeah. to me. Uh, my MagSafe phone... is like a magnet. It's yeah. like a magnet, just like I got on my iMac. Yeah, because my phone's an Android phone, and USB-C is the standard there. And, uh, yeah, if you knock it, you know, a few times, you might as well go get yourself another cable. Luckily, I haven't damaged, you know, the inside of the phone itself. Yeah. But, you know, those things have wear and tear. You know, even if you do everything right, you know, the USB-C and even the lightning connector... Uh, after a while, there's wear and tear, and you know you're SOL. <laughs> yes, you are. I mean, uh, around the house, I use a Qi charger all uh -huh. the time. You know, I have a Qi charger next to my bed, and then because I, I'm tired of messing around with the USB C cable, you know, you come in there, you can't find the freaking end of the cable, and it's supposed to be either way, but sometimes it doesn't fit it right. So, uh, you know, as long as I put the phone on the on the Qi charger at night, it charges yeah. up just fine. And in my office in here, I have a Qi charger. I have a lamp that has a Qi charger on it. Yeah. So, you know, so, it, you know, I, you know, I kind of like the Qi chargers. All your new cars have got Qi chargers on them, too. Yeah. Now, what yeah. about wireless but, charging? Is that available for these devices? Yeah, they're all available. That's that's Qi charging. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. So that's yeah, what you just put called. your phone flat, you right. know, and then that, yeah. So there's all kinds of cheat. The only downside about Qi chargers is it doesn't charge it as fast. Oh. Now, it's are they compatible charge. with the charging mechanism, like for the iWatch? Can you use the same one for the phone or no? Well, you can use it on the AirPods. Okay. I use a Qi charger. I use the same seat I, on the AirPods. Yeah. Okay. I use the same Qi charger on that. So okay. that works fine. Okay. okay. The watch, um, it's kind of hard to do because you got a band on it. Right. I think it would probably work, but you'd have to uh, unwrap the, the watch band on it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, let's go to the next model here. What's the next one? Okay. Yeah. Well, just to get back to the Pro Max, the, the camera is awesome on there. Yeah. You know, it's got three, you know, it's got all kinds. It's got slow mo and it's got uh, zoom and just anything you want in a camera, it's got it. Now, I, okay, remember get, the, I remember the original commercial that came out for the Pro Max a, few, a year ago. And mm -hmm. it said that it could replace even some of the uh movie cameras out there yeah. yeah 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 there's there's a lot of like a lot of home improvement shows us on discovery you know uh they use uh you know they they walk around with a stick you know and they yeah. film it that way a yeah lot of food and there's network. a lot of yeah food yeah. network yeah so yeah, the continuity would, would be great for the food network yeah because when somebody's fixing food you know the camera can take that above above shot going right. you know above going down right and that would be great that would be great for um you know and for and, you know like i said for classroom classroom well. too yeah. yeah yeah and logitech is making a, a little stand at wwdc they showed it in action and they had a prototype of a of a logitech clamp they'll sell for about 25 30 bucks yeah you know when logitech will come out with them and there's some other companies like anchor and 12 south and they're all come out with with the clamp that goes some kind of a stand that you can use put your phone on and use it for continuity yeah yeah but you know but you know it's nice to have a video conference on your phone you know yeah 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 i have the x the iphone 10 i need I do I do need, need to upgrade soon. Well, yeah, yeah, that's one of the things, you know, as the iOSs get released, you know, for the Apple side, there are devices that obviously are going to get knocked out of the running. I mean, something like the iPhone 6S is stuck around a while. I don't think uh, 
iOS 16 will support it or not. But, you know, the iPhone 10, I think, would probably still be around a little bit longer. I don't know. What do you Maybe think? Maybe. Would, you would have to check iOS. We would have to check iOS uh, 16. Yeah. And we can probably do that here pretty soon. If you want to go to the Apple website and answer Ashley's question, or well, I can still be talking. Yeah. Uh, just look under iOS 16 or just do a quick Google search. Okay. Why don't you, you know, go ahead which... and keep on going, and I'll try to do that search real quick. Okay. So let's go down to the iPhone 13 Pro. Okay. Um, it's it's a couple. It's you know it's a hundred dollars cheaper. Um. A little bit smaller phone. It's only six point one. Um, you know, it's um, pretty much twenty-two hour battery life. It's got the MagSafe on it. It's just a little bit smaller phone and a little bit cheaper phone. Camera is the same and everything. And that's about it. I mean, really, to it, just a couple hundred bucks. Some people can't afford the ten ninety-nine. That's just the basic. 128 if you want more storage you got to pay a lot more money than that right right and so and by the time you get tax and everything else on your you know on the pro max you're talking maybe 12 1300 dollars now uh, the what, iphone 13 yeah what that? Uh, storage do you think would be um the sweet spot so to speak between not too low and not too high i mean what do you think for most people uh, I think to me, 128 is fine because uh -huh. I use iCloud and just about everybody. If you have an iOS, if you have an Apple device, you've got to use, you know, you've got to use iCloud. I mean, you know, and so I would rather just go ahead and pay the extra, I don't know, five, five or $10 a month for extra iCloud storage than I would pay the extra money for the storage on a phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most of the stuff, most most people are going to stream music, okay? When they go, you know, the kids or, or anybody else, you know, when they go to YouTube, they're going to stream it. Right. Okay? So, really, there's, and, and people don't buy music like they used to. Mm -hmm. When you and I were kids, you know, I can remember <laughs> spending tons of money on CDs, you know, right? And yeah. then rip them. And vinyl. And then put them in Let's there. not forget vinyl. Yeah. Or the go to Napster. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a name from the past, Napster. Right. You know, and and download bootleg music. You know, and then you know you was always running out of space and stuff. Right. So, you know, I think uh, to me, I think 128. I think one terabyte of storage is just a little bit too much. I now, think for that's an over, iPad, yeah. you know, if you're going to do a lot of video editing and stuff, maybe for like an iPad. You know, a terabyte's not too bad, but for an iPhone, it's going to be mostly a portable device. You're going to stream everything. Yeah. And for Facebook and YouTube um, and TikTok, a lot of kids, you know, they're on TikTok, you know. Right, right. Uh, I think in the music, the music part, I think, I think 128 is fine. Yeah. I've got the list. I've got the list of supported devices. Okay. Uh, the iPhone 13 will be supported under iOS 16, the iPhone 13 mini, the iPhone 13 Pro, the Pro Max, iPhone 12, iPhone 12 mini, iPhone 12 Pro, iPhone 12 Pro Max, the 11, the 11 Pro, and the 11 Pro Max, the, the uh, 10S, 10S Max. 10R, the 10, Ashley, so you're still in the game. You're still uh, in the game, Ashley. Yeah, iPhone 8, the iPhone 8 Plus, and the iPhone SE, second generation or later. So, oh, those so good are the thing folks. I did drop my... Good thing I did drop my iPhone 7 in the pool because it wouldn't be supported anymore. <laughs> oh, is that what happened? You dropped it in the pool? Dropped it in the pool and... I, you know, I, you know, I picked it up right away, you know, and then it's just, um, after 10, 12 years of service, it finally shut, shut it cracked screens and everything else and finally you, shut the craps. 
you mean you didn't do the Mexican brujeria thing? Which is get a Ziploc with a thing yeah, of rice. Yeah, I did that. We did that. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I put it in rice, you know. It, it never did boot back up. So I had to scramble for a new phone. It broke my heart because I didn't really want to buy a new phone, okay? But, yeah. you know, and, um, but I, you know, I, I had to buy one. So, yeah. Because, you know, I, I was out of the commission for, you know, I couldn't find anything in town. Yeah. You know, You're, I didn't want to get hooked up with the carrier. So. Yeah. You're welcome, Ashley. Any Anything we can do to help, like I said. Any uh, other questions, just ask them. We can see what we can do. Yeah. So let's just move on to the iPhone 13. Okay. okay. Um, there again, a couple of hundred bucks cheaper uh, than the other one. Um, a little lower battery life, 19 hours. That's plenty. Actually. Why do you think that's the okay. case? Why do you think that one has lower battery life? Do you know? Phone smaller. Yeah. Yeah, the iPhone Pro Max is 6.7, just yeah. more space. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 19, you know, 19 hour battery life. That's 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 fine, no problem. Yeah. Um, you know, and it it's got the three cameras on it, so that's right. that's kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. And then moving on to the 13. Um, see, so I what's the price on that, Danny? Uh, hold on, Doug. Five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. And you get seventeen hours of battery life. Um smaller screen, super retina. Uh same thing. Um and it's got the MagSafe on it too. Yeah. You know, it's it's you know it's uh you know, it's got a couple you know, got the cameras on there, which is kinda nice. Right. And then the the lowest price one is the S E. Uh -huh. which is this one right here. Yeah. Okay. I, I bought an SC and uh 17 hour battery life. I'm very happy with the battery life on mine. No problem at all. Yeah. Um, you know, I took it to Corpus Christi last week and, um, went to a couple ball games. I went to the ball game and it held a charge the whole time, you know, and, um, it, it was fine. The camera, eh, not so great. Okay. Yeah. The camera is, is the old fashioned one, one camera deal, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's okay, but I'm about half blind anyway. So it doesn't make any difference to me. Okay. And, and I have, I've got a photographer in the family. So, you know, I can just depend on her to take the pictures, you know? Right. But, um, uh, it'd be nice to have the zooms just like last week i went to the ball game and we were actually on the second row from the from home plate and uh, the batter was up there and i took a picture and i wish i would have been able to zoom in but it looked like he was way long you know way far away and actually he was pretty close yeah and so camera could be a little bit better but for me that's fine you know yeah. The splash water and dust deal. I've already dropped this phone in the pool once. Oh, you did? And yeah, I dropped it once. Oh god. And I never had any you know, and it it come out of it real well. Um it took a little while for the speaker to give me a little bit more volume. Yeah. But it, it come out okay. Wow. So it worked okay. So what you need to yeah. get is one of those things from Academy, you know, with the pouch when you're at the pool i do i've got yeah i've got this thing right here oh okay and then what i do is that you know I, when i ride my bike and stuff yeah i just put it on there yeah and then it kind of protects it a little bit yeah i don't know what these people you know we had some she had some relatives down here over the weekend and they rode the banana boat over at the island and they fell off it a couple of times and I don't know if they had their phones with them or not, you know. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. salt water doesn't so, lend itself well to electronics, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the Apple Watch does okay. Yeah. In salt water, I'm told. I've never tried it, you know. Yeah. So the Apple Watches are pretty durable, though, believe it or not, and yeah. they're going to get more durable. Yeah. Uh, the screen's a little bit, you know, it, the screen's much smaller. Yeah. Okay. But you know. It's it's smaller, but 
it's okay because I don't really spend that much, you know. Um, you know, if I really want to look something up, I'll just go to my iMac, you know, and right. and and do you do some reading that way. Well, um, well, you know, it's all about screen time, and I think the younger ones spend more screen time on their phones than the older folks do. I mean, I'm I'm like you, you know, my daughter tends to send me screenshots on their phone, and I get frustrated because I it's too much of a small print for me. And so I prefer, you know, a screenshot from a, from a computer more than anything else. Yeah. But, you know? Yeah. Well, the nice thing and about, I can't read. Yeah. Go ahead. You know, I read, you know, I do a lot of reading books and, you know, my advanced years and my eyes aren't that great. And I just listen to audio books. Yeah. And this, this phone is great for an audio book. It's easier, you know, if you go somewhere, if you, you know, if you want to go to Home Depot or something like that, you know, you can just, you know, it's easier to take care of. And you just pop it in your pocket a little bit easier. So, yeah. And if you're um, driving but, and if you're driving too. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the only thing is, is that they'll probably discontinue the ST after this year. Yeah. I've heard rumors of that back, but, you know, there's a podcaster named Jason Snell that's on Mac Break Weekly and he's got, tons of podcasts on apple products and stuff and that's what he that's his main driver is an se yeah and it's cheaper yeah. you know it's it's a it's a minimum price phone yeah you know and and i really don't from in my particular case i don't need a big phone right or expensive phone well, so one it of works the, good for me well one of the nice things that this lineup this year is that you know they all have the same chip you know the a15 bionic which is great and they all have, yeah. for the most part, the same camera across the board. They didn't cheat uh, anybody on anything less nope. than that, you know. There's a, there's always something in the past. They always cheated some something. They cheated on. Right. The only thing is, to the SE, they the camera is only one camera. Right. Okay. Right. So, but hey, that's okay with me. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, but but. You well, know, what are... I've got, I've got a low budget, I've got a really low budget cell phone service. You know, I pay like twenty two dollars a month. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it's 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 fine. I'm on Wi Fi. I'm on Wi Fi most of the time, and if I need to get, if we go somewhere, I can feed off of her phone. Now, Diva, on the other hand, you know, she pretty much requires a big phone because. She does a lot of business stuff on her phone. Right. Right. Contracts and yeah. showing pictures and all that kind of stuff. So, but for me, I'm fine with the yeah, SE. Well, well, one of the things that I wanted to mention with regards to the iPhone 13, there was an article that came out about this week and it talked about the iPhone 13. And basically, the author of the article was saying that if Jobs have Steve Jobs been alive today that the iPhone 13 mini would have been his favorite uh, he goes on to say it was because it was a 5.4 inch screen not too small and obviously not too big but they were saying that one of the reasons why Jobs didn't like a big screen was the he had it, the fear that it would later introduce or open the window for a stylus or a stylus pen, which, you know, he hated. <laughs> I remember some phones. I had some phones that had styluses in them. I mean, I had a, an OHP. Yeah. Okay. That thing got about an hour and a half battery life, if yeah. I was lucky. And it had a stylus in it, and yeah. I just thought it was really cool. Uh, we're talking about 2003, 2002, you know, yeah. something like that. And and then, yeah, you know, I've, I've had some phones. Um, Android has tried styluses in the past, right? But yeah. like you said, he, you know, he Jobs always said, you you know, this is the best pencil you got right here, your finger, you know. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, the next. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead, Danny. 
All right. Well, the next slide we're going to go through is on the Android side. There's obviously some phones out there that have been rated, uh, you know, good for school. So we're going to go ahead and flip to that screen. And there's actually five models out there on the Android platform that have been rated as good phones for school. We'll start off by Samsung. Uh, Samsung has their Galaxy line, and their latest phone is the S22 Ultra. That is the big daddy on the Android side. It comes with a 6.8 dy dynamic AMOLED screen. It it's is, a big screen. It is a big screen. Yeah, it's a huge screen. Uh, it is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 processor, which is Generation 1. Uh, it comes with as low as 8 gigabytes of RAM and up to 12 gigabytes of RAM. And you can purchase it with 128 gigabytes of storage all the way to a terabyte of storage. And by the way, there no is external SD support for these phones. So once you max out at one terabyte, you're done. <laughs> there is no extra SD card like in the past that you can use, you know. It does come with a uh ten it's a hundred and eight megapixel uh and twelve megapixel ultra wide camera, uh ten megapixel telephoto camera and another 10 megapixel uh, 3x telephoto camera. That's a total of five cameras on this device. Uh, it comes with a 40 megapixel front end camera and it's got an 8 to 10 battery life. So unlike the iPhones, uh, the battery life on this monster is the max of 10 hours uh, you can understand why when you're sporting five cameras you're sporting a lot you're sucking a lot of power so that's the most uh, you can get on the Android side it does come with a stylus and uh, it is it comes standard with Android version 12 so that's the big daddy for the Samsung line is what that the foldable? Is that does that photo is that foldable? No, no, that's not the foldable. But there is okay. a couple of foldables coming out soon. Um, so maybe we'll have a show on those once they get released. The next one that's highly rated is a company called OnePlus. Uh, they've got the OnePlus Ten Pro. It also sports a 6.7 AMOLED screen. It's powered by Snapdragon 8. And you can get it with 128 gigabytes of storage all the way up to 256. It does come with three uh, cameras, uh, a main camera at 48 megapixels, a second ultra wide camera at 50 megapixels, and a third telephoto uh, camera lens at 8 megapixels. The front camera is 32 megapixels. And once again, just like the Samsung with all those cameras, the max battery life is 12 hours. And it comes standard with Android 12. Now the next three are by Google. These are Google manufactured phones. Uh, we'll start off with the Google Pixel 6. That one has a 6.4 OLED. Now it comes with a Tensor CPU. And that is a CPU that I believe is being manufactured for Google. And that is to kind of get away from relying on, Qual on Qualcomm for processors. I don't know much about the Tensor CPU. So I couldn't tell you how comparable it is to a Snapdragon. But it does come with 8 gigabytes of RAM. And you can get the Google Pixel uh, 6 for 120 gigabytes to 256 gigabytes. It does come with two cameras. A 50 megapixel back camera 
and a 12 megapixel ultra wide back camera. The front camera is kind of disappointing. It's only eight megapixels and the battery life's only eight hours. It does come with Android 12. Now, one of the things I do want to mention about the Google phones versus everybody else on the Android side is that you get pure Android when it comes to a Google form. When it comes to Samsung. That's important. It, yeah, that's important because of all the bloatware that is front loaded on the on the other on the, uh, with the other manufacturers not only that but the releases as the android uh operating system gets new releases it's easier to do those updates on a google phone and faster versus the samsung's because not only do they have to test the android the new android version on the Samsung, Samsung's got to ensure that it works with all the bloatware software they've loaded on top of just working with the phone. So that's a pain in the butt, you know, when you have a, a mm -hmm. Samsung is there's bloatware and you don't always get the latest and greatest Android updates right away. Uh, the next one is the Google Pixel 6a that has a 6.1 OLED. Once again, it's Tensor powered, but it only comes with six gigabytes of RAM. And then it's got only 128 gigabytes of storage. It comes with two cameras, a 12 megapixel rear for a main and a 12 megapixel ultra wide as well. Just like the Google Pixel, it's got an 8 megapixel front camera. And of course, this one's battery life is even worse. It's It only lasts six hours. Um, <laughs> and of course, it comes with Android 12. On the, on the, the next one is called the Google Pixel Pro. And I'm not sure if this one's been released yet. But that one's going to come with the biggest screen on the Google side. It's 6.7 inches OLED. And it's Tensor powered as well. It does come with 12 gigabytes of RAM. You can get it as low as 128 gigabytes of storage or up to 512. It does come with three cameras. It's a 50 megapixel main camera a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and then a 48 megapixel telephoto with 4x optical zoom at the rear and then its main front camera is about 11 megapixels and the battery life is a little better it's about seven hours and once again it's android 12 based uh, each of these phones, the Samsung is twelve hundred bucks, the OnePlus Pro is eight hundred bucks, the Google Pixel is at six hundred dollars, the six A is about four fifty, and the Pixel Pro is going to be about eight hundred and fifty dollars. I mean, quite honestly, Doug, you know, uh, in my opinion, for school, and I'm going to throw this out, you know. Uh, not because I've drunk the Apple Kool-Aid, but I would tend to think that it would be probably better for the student to kind of stick on the Apple side, primarily because, you know, Apple's always been involved in education all the way back to the old Apple II. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of apps out there specifically for education, both on the iPhone and the iPad. So mm -hmm. from my standpoint, because of that, as well as the pricing, I mean, it almost makes sense in my opinion, you know, that, uh, you know, you know, the Apple side is probably a safe bet, you know, the Android side's not bad, but you're not going to see the type of education applications out there like you normally can you, see on the can app. Can you get a can you get a pure Google phone from a carrier? Uh yes, if they 
if they sell the Google phone itself or the Motorola phone. Those are the only two phones out there on the Android side that are pure Google, pure Android. Because most of the time, yeah, most of the time you get, you go to like Verizon somewhere, you get a, you used to get a LG and or a Samsung right. or something like right. that. Right. You know, also too, you know, everybody, these kids, you know, they and just about everybody else, they live on texting. Yeah. Okay. And it's a real pain in the butt if you are got an iPhone and you text somebody with a Google, I mean, with an Android phone and the text doesn't go through or whatever, or that phone only to get CMS or something like that. Right. I don't know how many times I've had that problem. Okay. And, you know, Rodney, her, our son, you know, Rodney up in San Antonio, he's, he's an Android guy. I don't know what he's got, an LG or something. And I can never, I can never text him without it coming back, you know. Yeah, well, one of the things, iPhone. one of the things I was reading an article just uh, uh, before we started the podcast is that the delay is actually on Apple's side because yeah, there's I, something. I read that one too. Yeah, the the technology out there, the standard texting technology, is called RCS. I can't remember what the mm -hmm. acronym stands for. But you're right. They were talking about when Android and Apple users text each other, they sometimes get bubbles. They sometimes get different types of colors, reduced resolution on a video. I think right, hopefully it's right. something that everybody's got to come to an agreement on because you're right. It is it is a pain in the butt, you know, having to text back and forth, you know. Blue uh, bubble and, or green bubble. And not only that, you know, like FaceTime. Yeah. You know, I mean, you is it? Yeah, you can FaceTime from a from an iPhone to an Android phone. Right. On the last update, they were able to do that. Kind of a pain in the butt, though. Right. Well, okay. they're saying that you can initiate that the Apple user has to initiate the FaceTime yeah. call, but the other way around still can't happen. You know, the other way around. Yeah. You know. But I but, think, you know, most, I think most people have, even the kids have some kind of an iPhone. It may not be the latest and the greatest, but they do have, you know, a, a pass me down iPhone. Right. Okay. That their mom and dad had, and it got passed down to them and it's got all the same software. Right. Right. And, um, and so I think you're right. I think, you know, I mean, I'm an Apple you know, I'm an Apple, um, you know, person, you know, I got the t-shirt drunk the Kool-Aid. Yep. You're and, a bar but, drinker. But, um, <laughs> huh? You're the bar drinker. You've already been the Apple bar drinker. You know? Yeah. I'm an Apple fanboy. I'm an, I'm, I'm yeah. definitely an Apple fanboy, but, um, but it, you know, because it's so much, it's so universal. Right. Um, I well, I tell that, you what, uh, you know, I had the luxury just a few short years ago of having to support, um, you know, a, a huge iPhone, you know, base, you know, two, three hundred phones across the company. And um, yeah, it was tough. It was tough to do, especially when the iOS updates occurred. Uh, because there was VPN software we had to especially load and all kinds of stuff. But I just hope that we get to a point, especially when it comes to FaceTiming and texting, that hopefully we can get everybody agree on a standard because, you that know. That would be nice. It would be nice. It would be nice to be able that to go back and nice. forth. And I don't really think that Apple's going to lose any sales by allowing Android users to talk to one another and vice versa on the Android side. I mean, you know, the funny thing about all of this is that by now you've got the Apple camp and the Android camp and there's very little crossover back and forth. Those guys that are Apple have already made up their mind. And those that are Android have already made up their mind. Even though I did hear uh, Tim Cook mention some statistic that in India and China, uh, Android users there had kind of let their Android phones go in lieu of 
iPhones, which is fine. I mean, no big deal, right? But I think those camps are pretty much set, you know. Um, you know, there's reasons why people like Android. There's reasons why people like Apple. But, you know, from an educational standpoint, you know, knowing that kids already have a lot on their plate when it comes to holding on to their classes and, you know, research and stuff like that. I think the easeability of the of the Apple platform is probably more uh, conducive to them versus having them to, you know, go on the Android side and have them chase all kinds of things just to do something simple, you know, so. I agree. You know, you know. I agree. Not knocking the other side. It's just that, you know, it, it's just they've been around for a long time in education. So, you know. But anyway, so this was our show, everyone. Uh, these are the phones that have been rated the best for school. Uh, there's comparable phones on each side. Um, you know, we've got two or three weeks left here for... Uh, school to start some students have actually started already but there's still public schools out there and college that hasn't started so if you're looking for a phone for your child or even for yourself go out there uh, you can go to our YouTube page where we have all our videos we've done product reviews of different products you know both Apple and Windows and when it comes to phones you know, uh, yeah. the iPhone and the Android side. So, um, you know, I'm sure there's is... going to be a good, some good sales too, because around the middle of September, Apple always has an event for iPhones. Yes. And there'll be, and, and all the carriers and stuff will be discounting phones big time. Yeah. Well, this is yeah. definitely going to be a, an exciting month next month, uh, which reminds me that I've got to, uh, start planning for your big, uh, your big show next month because you take the lead on that. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, looked for a new iPad in October. I heard yeah. that today. Yeah, yeah. iPad Pro. IPad, yeah. iPad Pro or regular. Don't iPad? know for. I uh, don't know for sure yet. I would yeah. suspect it might be an iPad Pro. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Well, we'll and definitely probably, be looking. Probably an up. Uh, they might decide to upgrade the whole line. You know, is this. You know, just update the, the whole line, you know, because yeah. it's been even the low budget iPad. It, it's been two years on that. Yeah. But I heard today that it's pretty much a done deal. Yeah. So. Well, Ashley, thank you for being our thank you, number Ashley. one commenter tonight. Uh, feel free next week. Uh, we've got a show on the best uh, gaming graphics cards for you PC gamers out there. Steve will be back co-hosting that uh, that episode. That's next Tuesday or Monday, I believe, the 16th. And then Doug's going to be back with me, hopefully, if he doesn't win the lottery. Uh, we've got a, an episode with the South Texas Astronomical Society. And I know I've scheduled this show about three times, and we've had to schedule it for different various reasons. But we've got those guys coming back. And we're going to talk about the Astronomical Society. We're going to actually view the latest and greatest uh, images from the James Webb Telescope. We're going to talk about the observatory. For anybody that doesn't know, we have our own observatory here at the Resaca de la Palma State Park here in Olmito. If you've never been there, uh, they've, uh, they've got one Friday at the end of the month where you can actually go down there, go into the, the observatory and see the telescope. You can actually use the telescope to see out to the stars. So I know, uh, and go ahead. you know, Danny, in the middle of August, there's a lot of astronomical events happening. Yeah. Yeah. Now, around August 15th, August 16th. I've noticed that the other day, I think uh, a couple of the planets are in alignment. Yep. Etc. I'd have yep. to look it all up, but I remember seeing it. Yeah. A lot of stuff going middle of October, uh, middle of August. Yeah. Astronomically. Yeah. So, so we'll pretty, have these guys yeah. back. They're gonna blow you away. They're super smart, much smarter than Doug and I would ever be. 
But those images are phenomenal, and so stay tuned. That one will be scheduled for August 22nd. And we thank everybody for joining us, and we hope you have a great evening.